The other piece I want to show you um, is the by trend view here. Um, so this is another new edition where we've come to kind of show, excuse me, where we've come to kind of show what are the big changes that have happened um, in the last little while. So I can look if I want at the last 24 hours, or the last seven days, or the last 14 days, and see any sort of significant uh, changes that have happened either for good or for bad uh, in my transactions. So I can see, for example, like my checkout has improved only by 4%, um, but based on our analysis of the data, you know, we think we consider that to be a significant, like it's a real improvement. It's not just caused by noise or variability in the sample. Um, there is ac actually an upward trend, even though it's small. Uh, and similarly, similarly, I can see my most regressed transactions uh, where I have um, things that have gotten slower. So again, in this instance, it's only by a small bit, uh, but there are, you know, there's a definite trend of increased processing time that I could look into if I'm interested. So let's just drill into that tool store one again. If I come in from the trends view, I get a slightly different graph here. So we, when we came in before, we had the duration breakdown, um, but now we have the trends view, which allows us to kind of dig deeper into this data and see the kind of the smoothed view, which helps reveal the trend uh, um, contrasted with the raw data as well. So I can see the actual data and I can hide or show either one of those if I want to kind of experiment. Uh, in here, there's also like duration percentiles. So I can see my distribution of duration percentiles. Um, I can see my latency distribution. So kind of what my page load time looks like for different counts. Um, and I can also get an overview here of web vitals as well. So I can see you know, if, I'm, if I don't care about FP, but I care about FCP, maybe I don't care about FID. If I want to get rid of LCP because it kind of dwarfs the others, then I can sort of get a sense of those and so on. Um, let's suppose that this, so we saw that this transaction got a little bit worse. It was kind of 8% slower. Maybe that's not super concerning to me, um, but I might want to make sure that I don't miss out on something if it starts to get even, even slower again. So maybe I want to create an alert to remind me, hey, like if this, if this gets really bad, let me know so I can come back in and take another look. So from here, I can go and create a metric alert. Uh, and this basically lets me define alerting thresholds and say, hey, I want you to notify me. Um, so I can, I can say, okay, it's a metric alert. Uh, I want to do it in my production environment. My data sources event type transaction is pre-filled for me because I came in from there. And it has all the, all the pre-filled criteria for the particular transaction that I care about um, and some of the transaction durations and so forth. So let's, let me say I don't care about that. I just care about the transaction. Um, but maybe I want to make sure that I'm only looking at uh, transactions that have the LCP measurement because I'm going to set up my filter on, on LCP. Uh, and maybe I want the customer type again. So I, I, really, I really want to be notified when my enterprise customers uh, are having more of an issue. Uh, the function I'm interested in is P75. And it's not of transaction duration, it's of LCP. And that can be a little bit noisy. So let's smooth this out over more of like a 10 minute window. And then we can see kind of the graph of, is this gonna, is this gonna give me what I want? And now I can define my threshold. So I can say, okay, if, the, if it gets above 10 seconds, so 10,000 milliseconds, that's critical. I want you to tell me about that. Um, if it gets above, uh, a warning status, uh, let's say if it gets above eight seconds, then that's a warning threshold. And if it goes back down below four seconds, then that's resolved. So now I can see kind of where my alerting thresholds are gonna be um, and when I'll get notified or when the alert will kind of resolve itself and go away. Then I can choose the actions I want. So I can say, okay, I want you to email, email me or I want you to email one of my teams. So everybody on the team in Sentry um, maybe I want to do that if it's a warning. So I want to say, hey, if there's a warning, um, you know, email the team. We'll email that team. Perfect. Now, if it's a critical status, we might want to send that to Slack. Um, so maybe we'll, we'll, if I have the Slack integration set up, then I can add the notification to Slack. I can at username or at channel. 
Uh, maybe if it's critical, I also need to send it to PagerDuty. So maybe I have a PagerDuty integration set up and I want to set and I want to and I want to select uh, which team or which escalation policy that's going to go to and it'll automatically sort of escalate and make sure that um, it gets attention and action on that. And then I can give my rule my, my rule a name and, and go ahead and save it, which I won't do because I don't want to bug Neil's deals for the purpose of the demo, but that's the, that's the kind of the setup process around the metric alerts. You can set them up on different, uh, different functions. So if I want P95 instead of P75, if I want transaction duration for a backend uh, transaction instead of LCP for a front-end transaction, all of that is, is, is configurable. <clears throat> 